So now that we understand kind of what's going on in the rest of the program that we have, let's go ahead and start working the next part of the problem, which is how do we get the data that we've read from the joystick and the potentiometer from the controller across the air to the hovercraft? Um, to do that, we have two main options. One is we can send the X value followed by the Y value followed by the pop value. And just send them one at a time by the transceiver and then do it over and over and over again, sending them one at a time. So they'll be in the exact right order. So the first thing that the, the hovercraft gets will be the X value. It'll do that, the Y value, and then the pop valve. The only problem with this technique is that if something goes wrong in data transmission, say the hovercraft goes behind a concrete wall or something, it might miss or lose one of those values. So that means, like say the X value shows up, it uses the X value, and then the Y value hits something along the way and gets lost, the hovercraft never gets it. But the potentiometer value is right behind that Y value, so when it arrives at the hovercraft, the hovercraft incorrectly thinks that that potentiometer value is really the Y value. So instead of controlling the downdraft fan, it makes the, rope, makes the thrusters speed up and the downdraft goes slower. And the problem with this is once it gets off by one, every value that comes in is going to be off. So suddenly nothing will work right. Your X value will change the downdraft fan and the Y value will change the pop valve and there's all kinds of weird things will start happening. And it will keep doing that until there's at least another two more errors and it's back on track. To prevent this from happening, a smarter way of doing it is to take all three data pieces separate pieces and put them into one packet and then send that packet. That way, if something happens to one of the packets, that's no problem. If a packet shows up broken or messed up, it'll mess up the hovercraft for a split second until that next full packet shows up and corrects it to the right data. And it's going to be sending it really, really fast, hundreds of times a second. So if a packet or two every once in a while gets destroyed or messed up or missing, It'll just have a little tiny mess up in the hovercraft. You won't even notice it, and then it'll be corrected by the next packet. The key here is that it won't stay messed up. It'll fix itself on the next packet. All right, that was a long talk about the logic of this, because the next thing we're going to do is a little bit tricky, and I wanted you to know why we're going to do it. So what we're going to do is take these three values we have, X val, Y val, and pop val, and we're going to put them all into one thing that's called an array. So we're gonna package them up. All right, so to make an array, we are going to actually go up here to our, where our other integer values or our other um, variables are. I'm gonna put a blank space in there just to keep it separate. And I'm gonna do int, just like a regular variable. I'm gonna call this a data packet, although you don't have to, you could call it Bob's uncle. It's totally up to you. But data packet to me makes sense. Now. This is all exactly the same thing we would do with making a variable. To turn this into an array, we're gonna put a square bracket, open and close square bracket, and then an equal sign. What that square bracket does, it tells Arduino, hey, we're gonna have something with multiple pieces of data in it, not just one piece of data in it. All right, now to, to give it its starting values, we're gonna do a open curly brace, and then we're gonna give it three values. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna store the X val in the first slot, the Y value in the second, and the pop val in the third. And an array can have as many slots as you want, as long as you have enough memory for it. Um, in this case, we only need three slots. So to do this, I'm gonna say, hey, my X val, I'm gonna actually start my X value at 512, because that'll be like a dead joystick. The Y value also at 512, and then the pop val, I'll start at zero. And I'm putting a comma in between each of those elements. So each of these pieces of information that are in an array are called elements in the array. In many languages, arrays are actually called lists. And I think that language makes more sense because it's really just a list of values. All right, now semicolon to end it, just like every other um, variable. And so now we've got our, we've created a data packet and we've created it with three pieces of information in it and we've given the starting value for each piece of information. Now what we need to do is we need to be storing the new values that we're getting from the joystick 
and from the potentiometer in the correct slot in these places. All right. To do that, we got to go back down to our void loop. And underneath X val, we're going to go ahead and say, all right, let's go ahead and put that into the data packet. To do that, the code looks like this. Data packet equal and, oops, sorry, no equal yet. Data packet square bracket again. And now we have to tell it which position in the data packet we're going to go put it in. And we want to put it here in this first position. Now, annoyingly, computer programmers start counting at zero and not at one. Um, so if we're going to call this the first position here. We're going to call it not number one, but position zero. So element zero is here. And then this is element one and this is element two. And you might be like, why would you do that? And the reason is, if you count 10 things and you start at one, the last thing requires a two digit number, one zero to count it. But if you start at the number zero and you count 10 things, the last thing you count, that 10th thing, is can be represented by just a nine, a one digit number. And that just saved you a tiny bit of memory. And you might be thinking, well, that's dumb. Like, who cares about that tiny bit of memory? But if you think about how many trillions of times a day computer programs across the world count stuff up, because they're constantly counting things, it's a super common thing for computer programs to do, um, saving a tiny bit a trillion times is actually a pretty good saving. So we're going to learn this technique as well. So this is position 0, 1, and 2, and it's a nuisance, but we'll get used to it. All right, so here's how, here's how the code works. So I say, hey, we're going to store it in the data packet at position zero. And then I tell it what to store in there. And I want to put whatever number is in the X value here into that position. So control C, control V, my X value. And then semicolon. So this line of code tells the Arduino, hey, take whatever number was currently in the X value and take that number and save it into the first position element zero of the data packet. Awesome, we just did it. Now I'm gonna put a comment in. So it uh, stores the number in X value into the first position of data packet. All right, I'm going to close off this side thing so we can see a little better. Great. So that's the first one. Now we just need to do that two more times, one for the Y value and one for the pot value. So I'm going to say control C, control V, V, V. And I'm going to say, okay, data packet one is going to be for the Y value. And I'm going to change my comment over here to say Y value and then first to say second position the data packet. So that one's done. And now data packet zero, this one should be data packet element two, right? So it's the third thing over. And then I'm gonna call this one, this is gonna be the pop valve variable or pop value variable. Make sure that these value, these bit names are the names of the variables you used. Don't use mine um, unless they're the same, obviously. Pop value, and then this is gonna be the third position. Awesome. Now, if everything has gone right, we have just packaged up our X, Y, and pop valve data into one thing called an array, into one chunk of data we can send. All right, to see if this worked, we want to be able to print out something like this on the screen. Now, most computer languages, if you just do serial print data packet square brackets, it'll do this. It'll automatically add a curly brace a comma space, comma space, curly brace between all the different elements. Um, in our case, er, Arduino code doesn't do that. So we have to do it sort of manually. So the first thing we do is do a serial print for this first part, space, curly brace. Another serial print for data packet zero, this number. Another serial print for comma space. Another one for this number, another one for this comma space, another number here and here. So in the end, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven serial prints just to make this line show up. All right, it's a nuisance, but that's okay. 
we are tough. So I'm going to come up here and grab a couple serial prints from up here and copy and paste them down here. And then I'm going to adjust them so that they are the right thing. So serial print here. I remember we said we wanted this first part to be this space curly brace. So I'm going to insert the quotation marks. I'm going to do space and curly brace. And remember the quotation marks tell Arduino, hey, this isn't code inside here. Just print exactly what we type on the screen. And then here, I want the next thing that shows up on the screen to actually be data packet zero. So I'm going to come up here and copy this and paste it here. Okay. And now I need to do this again. So control C, V, V. And then I'm going to say here, after that number, I want a comma and a space. And instead of data packet zero here, I want data packet one to be printed next. And then I'm going to copy and paste those two. And I'm going to make this data packet two. And then after data packet element two, which is the third element in the list, confusingly so, I need one more serial print command and I'm gonna make that into the closing brace. So closing curly brace. And then I'm gonna put an L in here. And again, we're doing all this work because we wanna to test to make sure this is working. So once you get that all put in, then you're gonna run it on, oh, and also check up here. If you had an L in up here at this last um, thing here, an L in here, make sure to erase it. So if everything's working, it's going to print on your screen the X value, Y value, P value. And when you change the potentiometer or move the joystick, those should update appropriately. And next to all of these is going to be something that looks like this. And these numbers should be changing with the X, Y, and Z values. The X, Y, and the pot values on the left. So make sure everything is changing. If it is, that means we've successfully taken these values and we've put them into our data packet. All right, next thing we need to do, so pause what you're doing. You may wanna pause the video and get that part, make sure it's working before you do the next part. Um, all right, so the last thing we need to do is we need to, to go ahead and just send the data through, through the um, array. To do that, we need one quick line of code. Okay, so the line of code to make this run is going to be a function from the um, radio controller library, the NRF light library, and it looks like this, underscore radio, all lowercase, dot send, parentheses, and then all uppercase is going to say destination. Actually, I'm going to copy and paste from above, or I'm going to Miss, I'm going to miss two stuff. So I'm going to come up here and say, okay, here's my destination radio ID. This is the thing I want. It's where I'm sending to the, the little device I'm sending it to. So I'm going to say control C. I'm going to grab that variable, come back down here and paste that in and then comma ampersand. So we need a little ampersand symbol and then the name of the thing we're sending if we were sending a single variable, we just might put, we just might type in Y value, but we're sending the data packet. So we're gonna type in data packet here. I'm gonna copy and paste it so I don't make a mistake on the typing, except I'm gonna take out this zero. I don't wanna just send element zero, I wanna send the entire data packet. And so when it's empty like this, Arduino knows you mean the entire packet goes, and then comma space, and then I'm gonna do a command called size of and then I'm gonna call, type in data packet zero. So this is a function from the library. The function needs three pieces of information to work. It needs to know what radio it's going to, what ID it's going to. It needs to know what thing it's sending. In this case, we're sending the entire data packet. Then it needs to know how big that thing is that it's sending. And that's what this size of function does. So size of function, Arduino goes and looks at the data packet and comes back and says, oh, hey, it's so many bytes long or so many bits, whatever, however big it is. And that way the radio send knows what to do. At the end of this line, we need a semicolon, just like all, almost all of our lines. And then let's type in a quick comment here. This sends the 
data array, the data packet array to the hovercraft. Oh my gosh, you're not going to believe this, but that is it, my friends. You are ready. If this is working, you won't know if the radio sends working yet. You'll know it once you get the hovercraft code working and you'll be able to see if it actually works. But so far, the controller code is done. Hey, great job. Way to hang in there.